How many maps do you play on? And that is custom maps, by the way. I have over 50 gigabytes of custom maps, which got me thinking. When you download a source game, how many maps are you downloading? That is to say, comparable to the file size of the entire game, how much of that goes to the maps? I put that info together, and here are the results. To start off is Half-Life 2, which requires you to download 771 megabytes worth of maps, over 78 maps. This puts it to about a game average of about 10 megabytes per map, the largest of which is D2 Coast 09, at 36.5 megabytes. This is the beginning of Sand Traps, where you start off in a zombie-infested tunnel, in which you break out into a large beachside, where there's a house with combine burning bodies in front of it. Then you drive by a combine blockade, and then to a rebel blockade, with the world-famous battery puzzle. And then the level ends by entering another tunnel. The smallest map is D3 C1704. It's the level where you get introduced to hopper mines. At first, this surprised me, but taking a look at the overall size of a map, it makes sense. A lot of the areas are closed in and separated from one another. Plus, the geometry is quite simple, and there's not a whole lot of out-of-bounds detailing going on. The smallest true map, however, is Credits, at just 41 kilobytes. You don't even play this map when you go through the main campaign, as the final level just loads it up by itself. Instead, this is for the Credits chapter under New Game. Next up is Episode 1, which takes things down a notch by having just over a quarter of the original maps from Half-Life 2, at just 20. However, overall, it doesn't see that huge of a file size reduction, being 527 megabytes for an entire download. The largest is F1 Citadel 01, at 61.5 megabytes. That's almost double from Half-Life 2. Kind of. Another map that makes sense. A large open environment with a lot going on in it. You get introduced to the failing nature of the Citadel, learn about reconfiguring roller mines, seeing Combine soldiers attempting to escape, get past the big energy suck thing, get introduced to advisors, and then get the super gravity gun. The smallest map is Ep1 C1702 at 17 megabytes. This is something else that is similar to Half-Life 2. The map has a combination of both outdoors and enclosed spaces. Although at the same time, this map is still 17 megabytes, much larger than C1704, and plus has a lot more going on in it. You even get an Antlion Guard boss battle. How cool. Of course, the actual smallest map is, again, credits at 41 kilobytes. Surely the credits map can't last for long, right? It won't last for long, as in episode 2, we see the removal of credits. Instead, ep2 background 02 makes the smallest count at just 5.8 megabytes. However, episode 2, despite only having two more maps than episode 1, has a 150 megabyte file increase. The largest map in episode 2 is ep2 outland 06a the beginning of Riding Shotgun. Again, another vast open map with lots going on in it. You even get to fight hunters this time. The smallest map is Ep2 Outland 11B, all indoors, all story elements, and then you get to throw magnets and devices at a strider. Pushing over the gold source ports, Half-Life Source is 323 megabytes. The largest is C4A3 with an Interland fight. And the smallest is C4A1F, which is the map before the Interland fight. How funny. Of course, the actual smallest is background 02 again? How could this be? Half-Life Deathmatch Source is 50 megabytes over 11 maps. The largest is Boot Camp at 11 megabytes. And Frenzy is the smallest at 2 megabytes. Off to Lost Coast and Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, Lost Coast has four maps in it. The background, the main map, the hardware test, and then a clone of a hardware test. Regardless, this brings it up to 96 megabytes. The largest is the actual main map, and the smallest is Background 01. Half-Life 2 Deathmatch has 8 maps in it, at 68 megabytes total. DM Powerhouse is the largest, at 12 megabytes. For its indoor nature, it's got a lot of intricate brushwork going on. Halls 3 is the smallest, at an appropriate 3 megabytes. It's interesting that this map even exists in the first place, as it was only added in the 2013 Steam Pipe update. Day of Defeat Source comes in at about 285 megabytes over 9 maps, the largest of which is DoD Jagd at 43 megabytes, with holes being blown into a lot of buildings. A lot of time and effort went into these holes. The smallest is DoD Komar, Komar at 18 megabytes. 
This map is a lot more simpler, no intricate holes this time, and notably is a lot more simpler in its detail. Portal was both incredibly predictable, but also surprising. Overall, 406 megabytes for 26 maps. Quite average. However, the largest map, Test Chimb A15, surprised me, being 54 megabytes. I expected Portal's map file sizes to be a lot smaller, just due to how more simple the geometry was. But this map ended up being larger than Half-Life 2's largest map. On the contrary, Test Chimb A04 is just 5.5 megabytes. It's just three rooms, a single, quite simple puzzle. But of course, the smallest goes to Background 2, another second background map. There has to be some sort of conspiracy going on here. Portal 2 finally takes things up a notch, at having 2.47 gigabytes worth of maps. Additionally, this has crossed 106 maps, including both single player and co-op. The largest is SPA2BTS6, at 64 megabytes. This is that cool scene where you're going through the pipes with Wheatley, and then you get separated and it's really sad. Or at least, not really, because it was played as a joke. And then also he betrayed you. The smallest is SPA2 Triple Laser, at 7.5 megabytes. This is the cool triple laser puzzle that, while recording, I accidentally solved by mistake. Or maybe just unintentionally solved it. Regardless, I felt cool doing it. The actual smallest is SPA5 Credits, at 1.2 megabytes. So now the credits maps have taken hold again, or at least they're neck and neck with Background 2. Credits will win, because both Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 have credits, at 1 megabyte each. Left 4 Dead comes up at 929 megabytes for all of its maps, across 45 of them, with L4D Small Town 04 Main Street being the largest at 36.8 megabytes. This is the fourth map in Death Toll, right after the church holdout, and ends with a forklift crescendo. The smallest is L4D Airport 05 Runway at 8 megabytes. This also surprised me, but it makes sense. A lot of the geometry is just made up of props, and for the most part you're fighting on flat ground. Left 4 Dead 2 raises to 1.3 gigabytes, just 401 megabytes in Left 4 Dead. Of course, this is with all the DLCs. If you're just looking at the base maps, then it just has 669 megabytes. Smaller than the original Left 4 Dead. Who would have thought? C4M1 Milltown A1 comes up as Left 4 Dead 2's largest map at 47.5 megabytes. Again, a quite large, quite open map. That also has the added benefit of having to store information for multiple maps, as you have to traverse the map later on. And the smallest is C1M4 Atrium, at just 12.5 megabytes. Considering the curved geometry on this level, I'm surprised it's not larger. Constantly surprising me down every turn, CSS just has 20 maps in it. Even more surprising is that it's quite small as well, at just 225 megabytes. The largest map in this is CS Militia, at 24.5 megabytes. Which even in 2020, still remains as quite a pretty map. Especially the river. The smallest is CS Compound, at just 7 megabytes. I don't think this map would be that much out of place out of just Half-Life 2. It ends up working out quite well, just being quite simple. It's also convenient that both the largest and smallest maps are hostage maps. Of course, the true smallest is Test Speakers, a map that you can't even get to without console commands. At 282 kilobytes, it has beautiful error models. But if you want to test your speakers from someone saying left or right, then here you go. Left. Right. And to wrap things up before our two big games is Alien Swarm, at 285 megabytes across nine maps. But wait, isn't Day of Defeat Source also 285 megabytes across nine maps? Yes, and that's not incorrect. Both Alien Swarm and Day of Defeat Source contain 9 maps, both of them adding up to 285 megabytes. Maybe Source games are more connected than we think. The largest is Assy Jack 1 Landing Bay Pract at 65 megabytes. This is a map that you get loaded onto when you do offline play. And the smallest is Assy Jack 6 Sewer Junction at 18 megabytes. Which I can't say I accomplished, because two of the bots got abandoned, and then I died. The actual smallest is Lobby, at just 218 kilobytes. 
This map is just a pre-rendered cutscene, so don't worry about it too much. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is a beefy game, coming out at 4GB total. Across 36 maps, that also brings it up to the highest average of 120 megabytes per map. The largest is DZ Jungle Tea at 642 megabytes, but it's worth noting that this is largely due to packing. When a community map is added to CSGO, all of its custom content has to be packed into the map. Maps such as Jungle Tea, Breach, Studio, and even Cache have to include all their custom content in the map itself. As such, this greatly increases their file size. CSGO also just has a different BSP writing system, including prop scaling and prop combining. So naturally, CSGO file sizes would just be a lot larger. If you're looking for just a Valve map, then D-Nuke is the largest at 256 megabytes. Nuke was the first to use static prop combining, and Valve are known for using it quite a lot throughout the map. However, this doesn't stop AR baggage from being just 12 megabytes. Imagine how many baggages you could fit into a single jungle tee. And finally, we land at Team Fortress 2, with 116 maps, 4.23 gigabytes worth, it's the largest of any Source game. For the 12 years it's been running for, that's quite good. The largest is CP Snowplow, at 124 megabytes. Another community map that has a lot of custom content packed into it. However, it's got a trick to reduce its file size. Repacking. Repacking sounds similar to packing, but it does something different. It's essentially in-map compression. A lossless compression, mind you, that's used to reduce file size. It's incredibly effective, and is shown to save up to 70% of file size on any map. Snowplow would be way above 200 megabytes if it wasn't for repacking. But repacking also brings a problem. The feature was only added in 2015, and when it was added, some maps were retroactively updated to include this compression. However, not every map was treated to this, and as such, about 62 of them don't have any form of compression at all. This is lossless compression that can be done with no downsides, could be saving around a gigabyte's worth of file size. I'd like to see all these maps get retroactively updated again, just to reduce file size a little bit. If all the maps were compressed, then you'd be more in line with CP Egypt Final being the largest unpacked map. The smallest map in game is Cough Maple Ridge Event, at just 11 megabytes. Again, another repacked map, but also one that doesn't use a whole lot of custom content, if any. It's simple, and it does its job well. The smallest true map in the game is CP Cloak, an enigma of a map with no true intentions behind it. Except for just being a test map. Half-Life Alex is only a few hours away from release, and it'll be interesting to see how its file sizes for maps compared to other games. Its overall file size is already showing itself to be quite large, at over 60 gigabytes, so it's much more comparable to games that are coming out nowadays. Hopefully this video was interesting to you at the very least. While it's probably not information that you will be using a lot in your life, it's something. I've included the spreadsheet in the description below if you'd like to take a look at it.